Good morning. Today is Tuesday, December 19th, 2023. Author Schopenhauer was a philosopher in the 1800s, and he wrote, What do porcupines do in winter? If they come too close to one another, they injure each other. If they stay too far apart, they freeze. Life for porcupines is a delicate balance between closeness and distance. It's hard to get it right and dangerous to get it wrong. And so it is with us. Too close and we harm each other. Too distant, and we freeze. This is a major theme of the second half of the book of Beratius. We're in the middle of this now, with the Parsha of Vayigash. There is a foreshadowing of this theme a little bit earlier, a few weeks ago in the Parsha Vayetze, when Yaakov first leaves home. First, his brother is threatened to kill him, His parents want him to find a wife. He leaves home. On the way, he falls asleep and he has a dream. And the Torah says, as he was about to go to sleep that night, he took the stones from that place and he put them around himself as protection. So he's sleeping out in the the middle of nowhere. Later it became... Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, but at that time it was nowhere, and he put these stones around himself while he slept. And then the Torah says, Vayash came Yaakov Aboker. Yaakov woke up in the morning. This is after he had the famous dream of the ladder. Vayikach es ha'even asher samir And he took the stone, singular now, that he had placed around his head. So our rabbis point out that when he went to sleep, the stones were plural. When he woke up, the stone was singular. How did that happen? So our rabbis say that it was a miracle, it was a nace, that overnight the stones fused into one. And that was a prophetic message to Yaakov about what Yaakov would eventually achieve with his family. He would have many children, among them 12 sons, each of them very different, and they would, at least by the end of the book of Horatius, fuse into a harmonious family. Of course, at the point where we are right now, they are not only individual stones, they're quite far apart, both literally and figuratively. But Aviva Zornberg points out that the fusing of the stones into one is an almost surrealistic image for Yaakov's central preoccupation because stones do not fuse. They stubbornly, stonily preserve their separateness. The enterprise of raising 12 tribes from 12 sons seems similarly incapable of producing unity or harmony. And certainly, by the beginning of this week's Torah portion, that unity and harmony seems impossible. To raise a family is to engage with chaos. I think a lot of us can relate to this with the indeterminate and diverse, and to create harmony, a wholeness out of difference. And so, a family is hard to do. That's the job that Yaakov is engaged in. And that distance is the theme. And as we will learn in this week's Torah portion and the rest of Beratius, next week's Torah portion by Yechi, and as we know in our own lives, 
the miracle of unifying stones is much smaller and easier to accomplish than the miracle of unifying a family. Peace is much harder than revolution. Now, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs points out that on one level, we see this entire drama work out with Yehuda in our Torah portion, the Parsha of Vayigash. Two weeks ago, in the Parsha of Vayeshev, it was Yehuda, the third oldest son, the one destined for leadership, but the one who, at least at that point, we certainly do not see leadership, we see the opposite. He orchestrates, he is the son, the brother of Yosef, he's the brother that orchestrates a monstrous plot to kill their brother Yosef. And then they alter that plan and sell him into slavery. And the Torah said in that narrative, Vayiru oso merachok, the brothers saw Yosef merachok from a distance, ubeterem yikravalehim, and before he came close to them, vayisnaklu oso lahamiso, they came together on a plan to kill him. From a distance, merachok they can't see his face, but they can notice the ksones pasim, this very special garment of many colors that makes them so jealous and so angry that he was a favorite child of their father Yaakov. And the key word in that passage is meirochok. They saw him at a distance. And that word gives the force to the word that gives our Torah portion its name, Vayigash, which means, and he came close. Yehuda, who had been so distant, now comes close to Yosef. He approaches Yosef. Vayigash love Yehuda, and Yehuda approaches, comes close to Yosef and says to him, please let me speak to you. Don't get angry. Let me tell you the whole story. <clears throat> now, the irony of this is, from far away, we don't see people as human beings. And they become instead symbols or objects of envy or hatred or both. That's when people can do terrible things to one another. The tragedy perpetrated by Yehuda against Yostef, the root of the tragedy was distance, meirachok, from a distance. The plan to kill Yosef was the tragedy of frozen porcupines. And the only way to fix it is, the only way to reverse it is, vayigash. You have to come close. Vayigash elav Yehuda. Yehuda came close to Yosef. And Yosef and Yehuda finally, this may be, this may have been the first time in Yehuda's adult life that he came close to Yosef. And, and of course, it's ironic that at this moment Yehuda doesn't even know that it is Yosef. Yosef has not yet revealed himself. He thinks this is simply a stranger who is the second in command in Egypt. But that simple act of coming close melted all of Yosef's 
reserves. All of the hurt, all of the history, all of the distance that had existed between them, and in response to that vayigash, in response to Yehuda coming close, Yosef finally reveals himself to his brothers. Vayomer Yosef el Achiv, I'm sorry, Vayomer Yosef el Echav, Ani Yosef. Yosef says to his brothers, I am Yosef, I'm your brother. And immediately he draws them close. Vayomer Yosef el Echav, Kshunoilai. Yosef says to his brothers, Come close to me. Vayigoshu, and they come close to him. The same word, Vayigosh, here in the plural, because it's not just Yehuda, it's all the brothers who are now coming close to and embracing Yosef. <clears throat> and then immediately, the next thing that has to happen, Yosef says to his brothers, we have to hurry and we have to gather our family closer together. Vahaisa karov elai, and we will be close. You will be close to me again. This word vayigash, and finally, the multitude of stones that had been so separate is fused harmoniously into one son, into one family. And that happens purely as a result of Vayigash. Because distance creates chaos. Coming together creates unity, harmony, and coherence. And in the sense, that is the story not only in Bereshis, it's the story of every family every immediate family and every extended family. A couple of years ago, Yossi Klein Halevi did something quite daring and interesting. I have quoted him to you many times before. He lives in Israel he identifies as a right-wing person. He's a journalist, an author. He is a religious person, a religious Jew. And a couple of years ago, he and a friend of his, Mohammed Darashi, who is one of Israel's leading activists within the Arab-Israeli community trying to empower and integrate Israeli Arabs into the wider Israeli society. The two of them were both invited to the University of Illinois. And the purpose was that the two of them would model a respectful conversation about the future of Israeli society and the future of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So they have this event. The two of them are on the stage. And as the event was beginning, several dozen students staged a walkout. And each of them held up signs saying, stop normalizing genocide. Right? They were anti-Israel protesters. Unfortunately, we're seeing all too much of that today. <clears throat> so he, the two of them Yossi and Muhammad are about to speak, and this couple of dozen students, anti-Israel protesters, they walk out. So here's what Yossi said to the rest of the audience. And he said to them, there are two warring cultures playing out in this hall right now. Now, those warring cultures are not Muslims versus Jews and not even Israelis versus Palestinians. Instead, the war is between those who are committed to sitting together, 
looking each other in the eye and trying to make peace, Yasi and Muhammad, and those who are committed to a culture of cancellation, boycott, hyperbole, and hatred. So it's Vayigash, coming close, or Meirachok, staying at a distance. Halevi continued, Muhammad and I have many difficult issues to unpack. On some issues we agree, on some we disagree. And these are not just political debating points, these are life and death issues for ourselves, our families, our peoples. And yet we are committed to unpacking these issues together because we realize that the alternative is much worse. And today we see the alternative and we see how much worse it is. Halevi continued, what we're modeling here today is a painful conversation. It's a conversation about injustice on one side and fears for existence on the other. Everyone has grievances and wounds. We can continue along the path of feeding those grievances and wounds. And we see where that has brought us. And we certainly today dramatically and tragically see so much more sharply what that leads us to. Or we can try a different way. This alternative way is painful. And it is less emotionally gratifying than to walk out. But we are committed to sitting together and doing the hard work. That's Vayikash. And hopefully presenting a model, not only for the issues that Muhammad and I have no choice but to deal with, but perhaps for other issues in other parts of the world. And I would just extend that in other parts of life. It's either Vayikash or Merachok. It's either coming closer and trying to talk together, at least seeing each other as a human being, or at a distance and dehumanizing each other. Now, sadly, in Israel today, we're not there. We are a great distance, and it causes tremendous pain and suffering. At this moment, we don't have anyone to speak to. But ultimately, as improbable as it seems now, we need to get there. We need ultimately to get to Vayigash, just on an individual basis, on a community basis, and even on a national basis. We need to get to Vayigash, not Meirachok. Because Vayigash is ultimately the only way. My friends, I wish you a good day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.